Amen, amen. All things bright and beautiful, the Lord God made them all. The Lord God made you and me. The Lord God draw, draws us together into community so that this morning, this community comes together to worship, honor, and praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship today. It is good to gather together physically, online, wherever you are today. Welcome. Morning, Fairhaven. Morning. Morning. I'm happy to be here 3D with everybody today. I was happy I found my tie and my jacket. I got halfway out of the house in Bermuda shorts and fuzzy slippers before I realized I wasn't on a Zoom meeting. All right, good morning. I, a word spoken. A voice heard. A dream revealed. A mission received. God calls again and again. God beckons us to follow and love. To serve and give. Again and again, God invites us. To embrace the lonely. To feed the hungry. To tell the good news of Jesus. To sing songs of praise. Will you please join in hymn number 158, Come Christians Join to Sing. Will you please join me in the prayer of the day. We give thanks, O oh God, to sacred stories for the witness of Holy Scripture. Through it, you nurture our imaginations, touch our feelings, increase our awareness, and challenge our assumptions. 
Bless, we pray, our hearing of the word this day. Speak to each of us, speak to all of us, and grant that by the power of your spirit, we may be hearers and doers of your word. Amen. Please enter into a moment of silence to offer your personal prayers to our Savior. Holy God, the stillness, quiet, and solitude allows our hearts and minds to listen for your still, small voice. Speak, O God, for your servants are listening. Amen.
Scripture reading, scripture reading today, Mark chapter 9, verse 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life vain than to have two hands and go to hell, the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, for a word for the child in each of us. Thank you, Todd. Um, so I do have the word for the child in each of us today. Um, it is entitled, Things You Just Have to Do, uh, making it through the annoyances to get to the good stuff. All right. So not everyone loves everything they do. Um, some things you just sort of have to do. So things like going to school, possibly, if you don't like your work, everyone should always love their work. <laughs> uh, but if you don't like it, then, you know, it's something you still have to do. Um, indoor recess. I know I never liked indoor recess. That just, yeah. I want to go outside and play. I don't want to sit and play a board game that has one piece. Um, and so, but can you change the way you look at things? So you could turn that thing that you don't like into something better. So maybe while you're at school, you, that'll give you the opportunity to talk to friends. Um, if you were at indoor recess, you get a chance to color maybe, uh, if you like coloring. Um, even in individual things that you don't like, maybe you could have fun with them. Uh, I know mowing the lawn is not something that I do particularly or enjoy doing if I have to do it. Uh, so maybe you mow it at an angle just to change things up a little bit. Um, instead of doing laundry with the same sewing detergent, uh, maybe you mix it up. Um, I know that one of the tasks I really dislike is in fact laundry. Um, I have trouble sometimes motivating myself to even get the first load into the washer. I can sometimes do that though. However, when I have to come back to it, uh, that's, that's a bigger problem. I, I might leave it in there for way too long. Anyway, so one of the reasons that I takes that I don't come back to it well is because I couldn't fold, right? I, I am miserable at folding. 
Um, so what did I do? I thought of a creative way to try to get myself to help fold. And I asked for something uh, for Christmas that would make it a little easier and more entertaining. So this was my Christmas, one of my Christmas presents this past year. It is in fact a t-shirt folder. Um, it's a piece of plastic, uh, probably costs 40 cents to make but it absolutely makes it easier for me to fold a t-shirt. And so, you know what? And the t-shirts are nice and flat instead of the crinkly, which if I folded them normally. So this, this really has helped me. Um, I mean, I, and then, so another thing, uh, I am not a big fan of Shakespeare, shall we say. Um, you know, some people, my aunt, for example, uh, teach the art and meter of the quality iambic pentameter. I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about there in sonnets. Um, and so, you know, sometimes teachers might assign things to students to write a sonnet-like thing. And so in order to make it more interesting for myself, I took an eight-syllable word, diplomatic immunity, and tried to write 10-syllable couplets with that. So this actually was a poem I wrote when I was 12. Fun is diplomatic immunity. It benefits the whole community. Whether, here, whether it is here, there, or anywhere, diplomatic immunity is fair. Great concept. I know, I know there are tons of poems out there about diplomatic immunity, but I just wanted to put my two cents in for that. Um, and so, well, this is this example was somewhat silly. Um, it made me actually not mind going to that English class at that time. And I didn't want to go to English, but hey, if I could sort of mess around with a really weird, uh, quirky sort of poem, it at least made it more tolerable. And I don't necessarily have to look forward to English, but making it through and making it feel better for me is, is, is good. Uh, there's just, it's, just, it's just better for you. Um, so I don't like it. I wouldn't, I'm not happy to be there, but it wasn't a tragedy either. Um, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us the creative minds to change up necessarily what what the what our task is so that we can find ways to do it and find ways to be motivated and motivated to bless you bless your name in jesus name we pray amen seated. I invite you into a moment of prayer. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for your presence here today, for guiding this time of worship. We thank you for the precious name of Jesus, who offers us forgiveness and mercy and new life. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Let your spirit fall upon us in these moments. Speak to our hearts, speak to our lives. And gracious God, use me at, as your instrument to speak your word of love to the people who are gathered here in Christ's name. Amen. Salty Christians. So if you were paying attention to that scripture reading and reading along or listening, you know it is a difficult one. A difficult one to listen to, a difficult one to interpret, a difficult one to live. You get to the end of that scripture reading and you say that congregational response and you almost want to put a question mark on the end of it. Thanks be to God, really? Because there's at least three troubling sections in that lesson. It begins with the disciples asking 
uh, about asking Jesus, hey, we saw somebody exercising demons in your name, but he's not one of us. So what are we going to do about it? We got to tell him to stop, right? And Jesus says, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Anyone who is not against us is for us. Then you get on to that next section where it talks about maiming our bodies. If any part of our body causes us to sin, if our hand causes us to sin, cut it off for its end. But specifically, Jesus is talking about if you're standing in the way of someone and their relationship with Jesus Christ, that's a big sin and that's a problem. Now, if we follow Jesus' teachings here, all of us and the whole world would be blind. We wouldn't have hands and we wouldn't have feet. Jesus is using hyperbole. He's making sure that we get the message. He's using something that will get our attention to make sure that we know we've got to take faithful discipleship seriously. So that's section two. Then there are these really enigmatic verses about salt. Everyone will be salted with fire. What if salt loses its saltiness? And have salt in yourselves. Well, honestly, the scholars and the commentators aren't sure what to do with these verses, with those verses about salt. Several of them said, there's nothing particularly satisfying that I can write here but they wrote anyway. And some of their reflections actually inspired my own thinking. So as we think about salt and its relationship to the Christian life, I pray that you will find some, something here that will be meaningful for you. And perhaps in the process, we'll circle back around to those other sections in the passage. Everyone will be salted with fire, says Jesus. Everyone will be salted with fire. Fire is often used as a metaphor for the struggles and the pains that we face in life. And let's, let's realize together that we all have turmoil. We all have chaos. Um, some, th some of those things that happen are caused by our own poor choices or even our own good choices. They might be caused by the choices somebody else makes on our behalf. Or they might just be caused by the circumstances of life. We have health issues, health issues that cause physical pain or emotional instability or mental anguish. Maybe some relationships in our lives are fractured by distance, by distance or by our own deliberate actions. And how we discern and implement solutions to the chaos of life is a test of our personalities, a test of our intelligence, a test of our faith. On whom do we rely as we walk through these fires of life? Everyone will be salted with fire. Well, salt actually doesn't burn. Salt, one of the uses for salt is that you can use it to put out a grease fire. It puts out fires. So perhaps, Salt here is the knowledge that God is with us in the midst of our pains and struggles through the fires of life. Even though the pain, the turmoil, and the chaos is real, God will not allow us to be destroyed. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is also used to help draw out the impurities, and to preserve, say, meats or fish. Of course, you know, you know about uh, salt pork and salt fish. There's a lot of it in the, in the days before refrigeration because it would preserve those things so that you could have them and eat them later. Of course, you had to soak the salt out of it. But perhaps here, salt is a metaphor for God's preservation of our lives where the impurity of sin is drawn out of our hearts by Christ. We are offered God's mercy and God's forgiveness, and we have our lives transformed by the Holy Spirit. Everyone will be salted with fire. God purifies our hearts, 
and will not allow us to be destroyed by the fires of human existence. So another quality of salt. We put it on food, it enhances the flavor and draws the very best out from that dish that we've prepared. Without salt, our food is pretty bland. You know, think, of a, think of a scrambled egg without salt. <laughs> I'm actually a fan of some of the cooking com competition shows that are on Food Network. Um, and when food is judged, the number one comment the judges make is there's not enough salt. You need more salt in this dish. So during the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells the disciples, you are the salt of the earth. And through the ages, Jesus' disciples, you and me today, are the ones who are to draw out the flavor uh, and the best in the people whom we meet and the people we encounter in the world. We are the ones who salt the earth using our personalities, our talents, and our gifts, and the actions that we take on Christ's behalf. So as we salt the earth, we might display hospitality and the world learns to welcome the stranger. And when we offer forgiveness in the face of wrongdoing, relationships are rebuilt. And as we sacrifice on behalf of others, society relearns the value of taking actions on others' behalf without counting the cost to ourselves. Or when we work for peace rather than division, and hatred. People of our world learn to strive for understanding and for unity. When we do justice, we bring dignity and equity and new life to, to the world. And when we offer love in the face of hatred, we help people experience acceptance and worth and reconciliation. Through the sprinkling of the salt of discipleship, God's hope, God's peace, God's love, and God's joy is known, and the kingdom grows. Now, just like in cooking, in discipleship, the salt should never draw attention to itself. Too much salt destroys a dish. I remember the very first meal that I cooked for Nancy. It was actually in the dorms at Western Seminary at Strawn Hall. Um, and uh, the recipe called for both soy sauce and salt. And the recipe I was reading had an error. It read tablespoon. And it was supposed to be teaspoon. So that dish, that chicken dish, was almost in edible because all you could taste was the salt. Now Nancy hasn't kicked me out of the kitchen yet, so I must have learned a little something over the years. But as Christians, we never spread the salt of discipleship to draw attention to ourselves. It's not about us. And that's the issue that the disciples faced at the beginning of this reading. You see, they thought that everything they did, the exercising of demons, the teaching, the healings, it was all about them and what they were doing. And in Jesus' instructions that whoever is not against us is for us, it reminded them and it reminds us, it's not about us. It's not about our accomplishments. It's not about what we do. The care and the compassion that we offer for others is working for the kingdom not drawing attention to us, our congregation, or our denomination, but rather drawing attention to Jesus. Because there's something about that name. Everyone will be salted with fire. And then Jesus goes on to say, if salt, salt is good, says, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? As I understand it, Salt being a mineral cannot lose its properties. It will be salt. It is always salt. Um, but salt can become 
contaminated. It gets mixed with other stuff, and then it loses its effectiveness and loses its worth and value. So one of the reflections I was reading by Ralph Jacobson uh, wrote, he said, um, I have known disciples who have lost their saltiness. Never salt, but I've known disciples who have lost their saltiness. Perhaps they ran out of energy to serve, or they forgot how to love, or they've become bitter. And they've lost their spiritual core. Perhaps they've even placed barriers in front of those who are seeking to know Christ and serve him. Everyone will be salted with fire. Here's another meaning for fire. Fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. That when human disciples lose their saltiness, it is the Spirit of God that can revive that saltiness and make us salty again. The Spirit brings peace for weary souls, strength to carry on, and transformation and new life. But perhaps the key to understanding these teachings is that salt was required when the high priest made sacrificial offerings at the altar. And when that priest offered that salt with the offering, it was a sign of God's everlasting covenant with the people. Have salt in yourselves is to make an offering of ourselves at God's altar, to surrender ourselves, to surrender our all for the work of Christ. I surrender all. It is to trust that God's everlasting covenant of grace and love is true. And that because of that covenant, each one of us is going to find our purpose in life and find new life within. Having salt in ourselves, we offer ourselves to be salted with fire, to have our impurities drawn out by the forgiveness of Jesus. Remembering that the triune God is with us throughout all of life, then we are able to be salt for the world, working against the impurities of society calling for justice, guiding people to God's forgiveness. We salty Christians enhance the flavor of love and peace and joy in the world, not to draw attention to ourselves, but rather to draw attention to the presence of God in our midst and the power of the spirit to transform so that we might together continue the ministry of Christ. Are you feeling salty? Are you ready to go spread some salt for Christ? May we each surrender ourselves so that the work of Christ might be done in us and through us. Thanks be to God and amen. It is time for joys and concerns. Most holy and gracious God, we do give thanks for a time to come together in worship, honor, and praise of our Lord and Savior. We thank you for his presence in our lives, his guidance for us. We thank you for the faith that the spirit allows to grow in us so that we might walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Continue, O oh God, to keep us faithful. But we know for those moments when we stumble, when we fall, and we are less than you call us to be, that as we turn our hearts and our lives back to you, we find that you have offered forgiveness and you will bring us to new life and give us the power to turn and go in new direction. So gracious God, continue to guide us as we place ourselves into your care. We ask your blessing on us as a congregation. Continue to be with us, granting us the energy to be in ministry to our neighbors. We thank you for those who were able in any way to serve and to organize the meal yesterday for the homeless men at the shelter. We thank you for those who made burgers and those who uh, put together salads and those who organized and those who were there in person to meet face to face with the men who are unhoused. So gracious God, thank you for the gift of service.
we ask you to be with us. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And we ask, oh God, that you would continue to bring blessings to individuals and to families, to bring hope and care. We come to you with deep concerns um, for healing, for especially for those who are suffering from COVID right now. Enter in and bring healing to their lives. Be with all the doctors and nurses and grant them strength and perseverance and skill. And let them be reminded that we, that we support them and we care for them. We look around our world and we see um, refugees, Afghani refugees and Haitian refugees and the struggles of immigration and struggles of equality. And gracious God, sometimes we just throw up our hands because it seems so difficult to solve these issues. But grant, oh God, that we might have wisdom and discernment, and that the leaders of our nation, the leaders around the world might be guided to do what is right, to do what is just, to do what is loving. For each human being on the face of the earth is created in your image. Always remind us of this, oh God. We ask you to be with um, those who are affected by the Amtrak derailment this morning, for families who are and will be hearing the news of the death of loved ones. Surround them with your care and your comfort. For any who are injured, bring healing. For those who are, um, who are feeling they might be at fault, grant them comfort. Oh God, we look at our world and we, we see the, um, the gifts that all generations bring to society. But we know that the millennial generation right now is suffering and struggling. Some are seeking jobs, some are seeking um, to be fully employed. Some are just seeking to survive. Help us, O oh God, to reach out and to, uh, to accept new ideas and creativity. Help us, O oh God, to see the needs that are before us in this generation, the younger ones and the older ones. And wherever it is that we as a church and as individuals are called to serve and have the energy and the capacity to do so, send us out. For we know that you will give us that energy. We do pray for uh, the Hunt family who have lost a son to an accident this week. None of us, very few of us, know what it is like to lose a, a young adult son, young adult in our family. And gracious God, that's a deep loss. So bring comfort and peace, bring wholeness, bring new life. And now, oh God, as we prepare ourselves to go from this place today, grant that we might be filled with your spirit so that we would go forth and sprinkle the salt of your love and grace and new life wherever it is that we go. Use us to help build your kingdom so that the world might know of the love and grace of Jesus. It is in his name that we pray, and we pray the prayer that he taught us this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
now we will have our offering. Now, if you would join me in our prayer of dedication. Brother Jesus, make, make us, us and our gifts salt for the world. Make us and our gifts the source of comfort and relief to the suffering, bringing joy and courage to all. Bless our gifts of presence and treasure that people may recognize you like giver in our lives and in our world. Amen.
Now, as we prepare to leave this place, let us go in peace. Let us remember God's mercy and God's grace. Let us love one another as Jesus loved us. And let us be a beacon of hope to all we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>